In the depths of the tropical rainforests of far north Queensland lives one of the largest predatory insects in Australia. The adult giant rainforest mantid, Hyrodula majuscula, grows to seven centimetres in length. The robust females are among the fiercest predators of the rainforest. But the journey to maturity is rife with danger and obstacles await at every turn. This is the heart of the wild, where you are the hunted, or you are the hunter. The praying mantid Uthika, the equivalent of a bomb shelter for up to 400 praying mantid eggs. By now, the foamy substance excreted by the female giant rainforest mantid has hardened into a protective casing of protein, deterring predators that would make a meal out of the nutritious eggs within. The mother may be long gone by now, but she has not left her children unprotected. Now I've got uh, a female giant rainforest mantis here and uh, the reason I'm holding a female is because the males are more lightly built and can fly so it'd be zooming off into the uh, the trees somewhere nearby but being a female she's uh, more robust, big stocky animal and can't uh, really fly, flies more like a brick. So they've got two large compound eyes, big triangular shaped head which can move around on the neck very well, you can see it moving around now and uh, they can turn it this way and that way to look around. A lot of insects really have a fairly rigid head and can't move it much, but the mantids can turn it to look. And uh, because those eyes wrap around their head, they pretty much have 360 degree vision. They can see something that moves out the back here and they can turn their head to get a better look at it. And having two big eyes set well apart allows them to uh, basically uh, strike very accurately. So uh, uh, just like a, a, our eyes set apart gives us a good perception of distance. Now six legs being an insect, but uh, two of those legs are adapted for catching their food. So these are what we call raptorial legs. And they're the two at the front here. And they're armed with deadly spines that grip and grab hold, disimpale their prey. They pull that back to them and they basically eat their food alive. Inside the Uthika, the young are developing. The tropics of far north Queensland provide the perfect climate. And two months later, they hatch. This is the journey of one male. His name is Hyrodula. A growing nymph must eat frequently. Even just after hatching, giant rainforest mantids are voracious predators with fast metabolisms. The very young dine on small flies, caterpillars and even their siblings. But almost immediately their appetite grows larger. At this point, anything small enough to catch is on the menu. A male metallic green jumping spider, Cosmophasis micans, is unlucky enough to disturb Hyrodula. The hunt is on. Hyrodula hunts with 360 degrees of crystal clear vision. Cosmophasis also has excellent vision, making this a battle of eyesight. If Cosmophasis spots Hyrodula in time, he may escape but Hyrodula's green camouflage puts him at an advantage over the spider's metallic display of colours. Hyrodula sways from side to side as he stalks Cosmophasis. It may be to camouflage himself as a leaf in the wind, or it may be to help distinguish moving prey from a static background. Then, in milliseconds, it is all over for Cosmophasis. A larger animal might have been able to fight Hyrodula off, but the jumping spider is dwarfed even by a juvenile mantid. Now the mantid will eat Cosmophasis alive until there is nothing left. To disable its prey while it's eating it so that it can't be attacked back, the prey mantis will 
eat the bits of its prey that uh, could possibly hurt it. So it will eat um, the head first, any biting bits. It will eat um, any parts of its prey that could potentially sting or hurt the prey mantis in any way. Not long from now, Hyrodula must find a suitable place to molt. This is usually done hanging upside down from the underside of a leaf or branch. As an arthropod, he has no internal skeleton. Instead, a hardened substance called chitin makes up the exoskeleton on the outside of the body. Hyrodula finds a leaf and molting begins. Now this uh, particular one is an adult, so it won't molt anymore, but of course young mantids have to molt. To start the molting process, they suspend themselves in uh, the bush or tree they're living in, and their skin or the exoskeleton splits just behind the head there, and they start to pump themselves out of that, and they come out really soft and pale. And it takes quite a, a while for them to come out, probably about 15 minutes for them to completely come out, and then they hang below it until that new exoskeleton hardens. It's a very vulnerable time for them because that's when they can't react, they can't move, and of course their exoskeleton's soft, so it's not giving them much protection at all. So that's when a predator could really get hold of them and make a mess of them. This is one of Hyrodula's most vulnerable times. Molting is dangerous, like all aspects of life in the rainforest. Having just emerged from his exoskeleton, Hyrodula is soft, wet and completely vulnerable to predation. But what could eat such a mighty predator as this? Well, when it's this size, not a whole lot of things. I mean, something like a big lizard could and a large bird might be able to take off a bit. But it's mainly when the praying mantid is smaller that uh, it's more prone to predation from things like birds, from other praying mantids, from spiders. Pretty much any other predator. One of far north Queensland's common spiders, the jungle huntsman, Heteropoda jugulans, is on the prowl nearby. This spider actively hunts at night for prey, using its long sensory hairs to interpret its environment. With a leg span of around 80 millimetres, though not as large as some huntsman spiders, Heteropoda would not hesitate to devour a helpless mantid nymph. Hyrodula must molt quickly or die. Hyrodula was lucky this time. Chance plays a heavy part in much of life in the rainforest, but not all. Some is pure genetics. It's time for Hyrodula to grow up. The mature male Hyrodula majuscula is much leaner than the adult female. Lighter and smaller, his wings are fully functional. He no longer dedicates his time to hunting and will only eat a few more times before he dies. From now on, the only thing on his mind is sex. But how does one go about finding a well-camouflaged female in the wide expanse of the rainforest? For this, Hyrodula puts away his sharp eyesight and pulls out his antennae. 
These keen receptors are primed to pick up pheromones emanating from the female. In the dark of the night, chemical signals work better than eyesight. Pheromones let the male know the female is ready to mate, but the molecules can travel vast distances through the air. To locate the source, Hyrodula must take to the wing. In the trees, the adult mantis has few predators. In the air, a danger of a different sort awaits. Microbats are obviously a very large family of nocturnal flying um, insect eaters. Um, they can grow up to about 170 grams. They use a, a form of echolocation similar to, to dolphins that they emit a high frequency pulse. It, it helps them define between a um, mosquito and say a, a brick wall. Flying insects is the, the main way they do it, is they eat on the wing. So the, the free tails will catch them while they're flying, so they'll, they'll come along behind them and catch them and eat them as they're flying. Whereas sheath tails, who have a kind of like a kind of parachute thing between their legs and their tail, like a kite, um, allows them to come up behind the insect and tuck their wing, their tail underneath them and catch it in the tail. And then they'll reach down with their mouth and pull it out and then land to eat it. Now the remarkable thing about praying mantids is they have this ultrasonic ear which is located underneath the, the body. Now when the males are flying around at night uh, looking for the females, uh, they're vulnerable to many predators but one in particular are microbats and they're, they're flying around with their echolocation uh, uh, making very high pitched noises to locate their prey. Now the mantid's specialised ear can pick these uh, high pitched noises up and if it picks up the, the echolocation of a uh, microbat, it immediately goes into a tailspin. It can close the wings, fall out of the sky, or just dive and turn. Just anything it can do to avoid being hit by that bat. There is a species called the leaf nose, the diadem leaf nose bat, which have particularly good eyesight as opposed to other microbats. And they'll use their echolocation to find their prey, their praying mantids. They'll, they'll scope them out, and when they get close to catching them, they'll, they'll turn their sonar off to be able to catch the praying mantid and they'll go on land to eat it. Now is the biggest test of all. Having landed behind her on the branch, it may take several hours for him to approach. He does so with utmost caution aware that every moment could be his last. Hyrodula grips the female firmly around the thorax with his raptorial forelegs. Pinned like this, he prevents her turning around to eat him. Simultaneously, he mounts her back and engages with her reproductive opening to deposit his sperm. The couple may remain locked together for up to 48 hours in this violent embrace. In some cases, the female begins to eat the male during copulation. Starting with the head, she can eat most of the way through his thorax while he continues to mate. Being decapitated may even be a selective advantage. While a male that successfully escapes the female after mating may not find another mate before he dies, one that is eaten during copulation provides energy and nutrients for the fertilised eggs. For these eggs, that means a greater chance of successful laying and hatching. Fortunately for Hyrodula, he escapes. But his work here is done. Now his legacy continues in the story of his genes. The life of a new hunter begins. <laughs>